Here are the antiderivatives you must know. The simplest one is integral of 1. And since antiderivative means a function whose derivative is equal to, to this function, what differentiates to 1? It, x differentiates to 1, right? So the integral of 1 is x. And for any antiderivative, you must put a constant c. Now, this means that if you have any constant, because constants can be brought outside the integral, just like derivatives, right? So c is same as c times 1. And since integral of this 1 is equal to x, you get cx. And uh, I'm writing a lowercase c. It's hard to distinguish. Uh, usually the integral constant is capital C. Okay? So that, that's what this actually means. Okay? Alright, the second thing that you have to know is something that we already went over. It's the power rule. And for power rule, it's very important that you don't rely on the formula. You have to think of it as two steps. First, add a 1 to the top and put the reciprocal of this number in front. Okay? So even if I'm writing 1 over n plus 1, please realize that this 1 over n plus 1 simply means it should be the reciprocal of this number. Uh, it seems like I'm saying the same thing, but in practice, uh, thinking about this coefficient as the reciprocal will save you a bit more time and it will be less confusing. So uh, just to give you one example would be if you integrate square root of x dx, that's uh, x to the 1 half power, right? And what you do is 1, one added to 1 half is 3 over 2, and its reciprocal is, is 2 over 3. So if you just simply thought of n plus 1 as 3 over 2 and try to plug it into this formula, you end up with a complex fraction. You get 1 over 3 over 2. And it takes more steps to actually simplify it. So it's better to just say something, put the reciprocal, OK? Now, uh, these are the simplest ones. And in addition to this, you should know the integral of e to the x. Well, the antiderivative of e to the x would be e to the x, because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And there's actually one more thing that's like a blind spot in this one. So uh, if you have an integral, and actually, I would like to use a, a red pen for this. See. Uh, very important. If you have an integral of x to the negative 1 dx, this power rule is useless because uh, if n is negative 1, then negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and the reciprocal of 0 is not defined. 1 over 0 is not a number. So this, this one here is actually allowed only when n is not equal to negative 1. Okay? If n is indeed negative 1, then what you need to do is first rewrite this as 1 over x. And uh, if you have 1 over x, well, what differentiates to 1 over x? That's ln of x, right? So uh, this is an additional thing that you have to remember on top of the antiderivative, so uh, the top of the power rule. So uh, the power rule seems to work or work for all n, but it has this blind spot. If n is negative 1, this power rule cannot be used, and you have to change that to 1 over x, and you actually get the log of x. Okay. Now, uh, it actually is a little bit more complicated than this uh, and uh, that requires a little bit more explanation uh, when you integrate the 1 over x you actually need ln of the absolute value of x and the reason for that uh, is the following if you integrate if you differentiate ln of x of course that's 1 over x right but it's also true that if you differentiate ln of negative x uh, then by the chain rule, it's 1 over negative x, 
and you make a copy of the inside function and you get 1 over negative x, negative 1, and negative and negative cancels and you get 1 over x. So indeed, both log of x and log of negative x produces 1 over x when you differentiate. And the interesting thing is this function log of x is only defined when x is positive. Uh, and therefore, this second function will be only defined for x negative. So, uh, if you define ln of, if you think about what ln of absolute value of x is, this is really ln of x when x is positive, because when x is positive, absolute value of x doesn't do anything. But if x is negative, then this is equivalent to saying ln of negative x, because uh, absolute value of x is the same as negative x. Don't be fooled by this negative sign. Negative x is actually positive because x is negative. If x is negative, negative x is positive. Yeah, uh, think about that, okay? So if x is negative, negative x is positive, so absolute value of x will become negative x. If you're not convinced, just think about when x is negative 2. Then absolute value of negative 2 would be negative of negative 2, which is 2, okay? Okay, so. Uh, since this is true because of these observations, uh, whenever you find the integral of 1 over x, you have to take the ln of absolute value of x. Okay, and that's it. These are the integrals you must know. You have to know that integral of 1 gives you x, or any constant is just that number times x. x to the n, you use the power rule. e to the x, of course, and the integral is e to the x. And then uh, if you have the special case for the power rule, if you have x to the negative 1 power, then you have to integrate 1 over x, which gives you ln of absolute value of x. Don't forget this absolute value.